Chris Davis and the Milwaukee Brewers getting ready to roll and the rubber match of this three game series as the Brewers continue the road trip against division rivals. Hi, everybody. We welcome you from PNC alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Brian Anderson. We'll hear from Telly Hughes in a moment as well. And we have our play Sun Smart pens on for good reason. It's because we're hoping the sun actually comes out today. Uh, Going to be dodging some thunderstorms. But uh, before we get into the weather and all of that, Rock, let's talk about Chris Davis. We just saw him. He has been one of the best hitters over the last three weeks in all of baseball. He's hitting for average, hitting for power. Been quite a fine for Milwaukee. Well, he's relaxed. I mean, it takes some young players a little bit of time to determine that they are very quick and they're very relaxed up there at the plate. All of a sudden, Chris Davis is starting to really wait back. He's got lightning quick hands, and right now he's hitting the ball all over the diamond. He was pulling everything early in the year. I think he was just a little bit amped up getting that opportunity out in left field. The Brewers moving Ryan Braun over to right to make room for him. I think a little bit too much pressure on himself. But right now, he's the Chris Davis that the Brewers saw in the second half and carrying the offense right now. Well, since May 24th, that's a good uh, line in the sand to draw with Davis. He is tops in the major leagues in batting average. He is tops in the major leagues in runs scored and OPS. That's an extraordinary number at uh, over 1,000, 1 1.3 actually. And he's sixth in the major leagues in home runs since May 24th as well. He's having a great run. Series finale. We hope we get it going. The Brewers won big yesterday. Series all even at one apiece. We'll check in with Telly Hughes when we come back from Pittsburgh. Our time to 1.40 local time. I'm Telly Hughes here at PNC Park. Giovanni Gallardo would like to follow suit of what his team has done so far this series. The Brewers got a bounce back win yesterday over the Pirates 9 to 3 after a series opening loss 15 to 5 on Friday night. Gallardo is looking to regroup after giving up a season high six runs his last start. It's a long year. Uh, you know, Every every guy out here, you know, we we understand that we're not going to feel 100% every time out. 
And, uh, you know, you're going to have games like that. It's just the most important thing is to, to bounce back right away and, uh, you know, get back out there as, as quickly as you can. The starters are getting set. Giovanni Gallardo, Jeff Lott pitching the series finale. First pitch coming your way after the break. All your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. 75 degrees, cloudy skies up above, thunderstorms all around, as meteorologist Telly Hughes reported, but uh, hopefully... We're going to get this one in today. They had two great days of weather. The first two days of this series, the Brewers and the Pirates splitting so far. That puts the Brewers now, after their win yesterday, at 11 games over 500. They have a five-game lead over the Cardinals in the National League Central. The Pirates drop back to seven back. By the way, St. Louis and Toronto are underway. They are scoreless in the second. We'll keep an eye on that game as well throughout the rest of the day. Brewers made a roster move after last night's victory. Tyler Thornburg was placed on the disabled list and Ron Renneke saying more it's more in the forearm than the elbow but certainly a little bit of concern there with Thornburg so he goes on the DL and Mike Fires returns to the major leagues having a great year in AAA Nashville and for more on Mike Fires we check in with Telly. Mike Fires just got here just a couple of hours ago and Rod Renneke said there was a lot of talk between him and Jimmy Nelson both have been pitching extremely well down in Nashville but Fires was the option because he does have experience coming out of the bullpen and he said that's something that they really need especially when you start looking at the fact that the Brewers bullpen has had to come up with good quality innings and important innings in the sixth and seventh innings of a lot of ball games as of late and asked when what has been the difference for fires so far this season down in Nashville he said he's just getting back to where he was the year before last last year was a hard year for Mike on and off the field but he said now he's pitching with confidence and Mike Fires should factor in extremely well at when you factor in how important the innings he's going to have to pitch coming out of the bullpen. A great comeback for fires as well tough year last year lost his mother actually had a broken arm as well. Leading the PCL in strikeouts. 
uh, at the time of his promotion. So good to have Mike Fires back, and we wish Thornburg the best in his recovery. Ron Renicki's lineup today, very similar look again as the Brewers try to win this series. Got Gene Segura leading off, Ryan Braun, then Jonathan Lucroy. In the middle of the order, it's Gomez, Ramirez, and Chris Davis. And then Ricky Weeks gets the start today against the left-hander lock. Mark Reynolds over at first, and Giovanni Gallardo rounding it out. That's the Associated Bank Milwaukee Brewers lineup. And speaking of AAA call-ups, <laughs> Jeff Locke called up from AAA Indianapolis to make this start today. Yeah, started the year on the 15-day disabled list with a right side strain, and after he came off, was sent right down to the minor leagues. Last start for May 5th against the Giants. You see, he got roughed up quite a bit, making his first start this year. And Jeff Locke certainly really burst onto the scene last year, making the All Star team, but had a miserable second half. Well, Gene Segura was teammates with Locke on the National League All Stars last season. He'll lead off. And Locke ready to deliver the first pitch, and away we go. Strike one. Segura batting 261 to as we uh, start the game today with a couple of home runs. Outs in the air to center field. And McCutcheon is there to make the play for the out. Pirates going old school today. Their Sunday throwback uniforms. And how about the Pirates defensively today? Rock courtesy of an arm. Yeah, they were uh, miserable defensively in yesterday's ball game. Five errors, three of them coming in the first inning of the game. And you can see uh, Pedro Alvarez having a rough time over there defensively. Infield not very good yesterday. Russell Martin, the anchor of that defense, very good, solid defensive catcher. And he's going to be hanging a sign for Jeff Locke here today. Ed Hickox will call the balls and strikes. Lance Barrett, John Tumpane, and that man, Mike Everett, on the bases. Mike is the crew chief as Brian Braun takes a strike. Now, Braun back in the two spot in the order today. A 311 hitter coming into play. Has nine homers, 33 driven in. Brewers had some tack on runs yesterday. They scored four in the eighth and then added one in the ninth. Braun. Was responsible for two of those four runs in the eighth inning. Had a two RBI double. He was one for five yesterday. Brewers beat the Pirates nine to three after losing the opener 15 5. So a couple of lopsided affairs in the first two meetings. Matt Garza got the win yesterday, improving his record to four and four. He went six innings, gave up three earned runs. Worked around five walks in yesterday's game, but Brewers got great work from the bullpen. Wooten, Smith, and Kinsler to finish it up. Hey, the Pirates had a tough time with runners in scoring position in yesterday's ball game. And Ryan Braun talking about a good approach to the plate. I mean, that's a pretty good pitch right there, down and away, and he hammers it off of that right center field fence. And driving in Gene Segura. So the Brewers uh, up their old tricks again offensively yesterday after a rough day. At the plate to start the series. Yeah, the Brewers with nine runs on nine hits yesterday. Actually had a double digit hit total in the opener of this series, but just couldn't quite capitalize on all of those base runners. Brewers offense is churning along right now. Johnny Naren, the hitting coach, has to be very pleased as Braun strikes out. So Locke has. Come back to quick outs. Now one thing he's doing is throwing a lot of strikes down in the minor leagues. 22 walks in 50 innings of work. Here's a change up right on the outside corner to get Braun. A little hesitation that delivery turns his back and looks like a fastball, but it just chokes off the speed. Uh, last year at this time, Locke was going along as one of the best left handers in the big leagues. As he deals a ball inside to Lucroy, 26 year old Locke, he's a New Hampshire native, made the All Star team last year. And at the time of the All Star game, he was 8 and 2 with a 2.15 ERA. But six weeks later, he was in, in uh, AAA. Quite a fall from grace. Dealt with some injuries last year. He finished the season in the big leagues 
with a 10 and 7 record and a 352 earned run average. And location not as good in the second half of the year for him. Plus the league kind of figured him out a little bit and wasn't able to make adjustments. And a good year down in the minor leagues, Triple A Indianapolis. There's a strike inside corner to Lucroy. Locke ended up leading the National League in walks last year. And a lot of that came in the second half. Pirates are still very high on him. But they're hoping he's healthy and they're hoping he's right to return to the big leagues as Lucroy bounces to Alvarez. Got a live wire crowd today on Kids Day at PNC. The Brewers failed to score in the first, and now Yovani Gallardo, the Brewers opening day starter, looking for a bounce back start against the Buccos. It's all weekend, at least 35,000 every game of this series. Glenn Hurdle, year four as the Pirates skipper, took him to the postseason last year, snapping a 20-year drought of postseason play. His Associated Bank lineup with Harrison Walker in the reigning MVP, Andrew McCutcheon at the top, Sanchez Martin Alvarez in the middle with Marte Mercer and Locke at the bottom. Marte getting his first start of this series and there is Giovanni Gallardo start number 13 and could use a bounce back after a rough one his last time out. And they give up six runs in five innings of work. It was a couple of home runs that did him in a three run home run and a two run shot and he's done very well against the Pirates in his career. Twenty third start today and an eleven and four record against the Buccos. Josh Harrison back in the leadoff spot. And back in right field tough to get this guy out of the lineup lately for the Pirates. He's going along at a 308 clip coming into play today with four homers 14 driven in. Harrison hit the ball hard. Just about every time up yesterday it did extend his hitting streak with a base hit double his final at bat he's up to 10 games in a row. And he's showing a good eye at the play. That's why Clint Hurdle likes him in that leadoff spot on base percentage at about 350. That's what you like to see out of your leadoff hitter. Don't get a hit, take a walk. Gallardo deals a 2 1 bouncer out to Segura. Knows he has to hustle it over to first. And that's how the day begins for Gallardo as we check the Brewers' Menards defense today. Yeah, the Brewers' defense has been very good just about all season long. Currently tied for second. In fielding, fielding uh, percentage, only behind the Cincinnati Reds, Davis, Gomez, and Braun from left to right, and Ramirez, Segura, Weeks, and Reynolds. Ricky gets a start with the left-hander out there in the mound, and Luke Roy back behind home plate. Now the starter that was on the books when this series began was Charlie Morton. He's been bumped back to tomorrow as they bring Jeff Locke up as Gallardo misses low and away to Neil Walker. 
Pirates have a little trouble in their pitching core as well. Garrett Cole, their talented young right hander, has a shoulder problem, a little fatigue in the shoulder. And that's why Locke is here and why Charlie Morton pitches tomorrow. Could be a big loss for the Pirates. You always get a little nervous with the starting pitchers, shoulder injuries. I think the Brewers are a little more confident with Thornburg and the elbow than the Pirates are with Garrett Cole and the shoulder. And Garrett Cole is certainly a guy that they're trying to build that starting rotation around and uh, never a good sign when you have your young stud having a problem with that shoulder. A good breaking ball from Gallardo. Good curveball early and a swing and a miss by Walker. And you have a bit of a wild card with Jeff Locke. Pirates really not sure what they're going to get out of him. Garrett Cole in the dugout. Going to be shut down for a little while as Gallardo hits Walker on a 1 2 pitch. Hey, that one not even close. Not sure what it was. I think it was an off speed pitch. Let's see. And yeah, breaking pitch and got it right in the back of the leg, not even close to the strike zone. Well, a man on for McCutcheon. They love him here in Pittsburgh, the reigning MVP. McCutcheon has his batting average over 300. That was not the case when this series began, but he's had a good series. He's at 302 now, seven homers, 28 driven in. Yesterday McCutcheon was one for three. He homered here in the opener of this series on Friday night. Had a double in a home run Friday. And he's always hit pretty well against Giovanni Gallardo. Three career home runs against Yo. And one of those guys that you really can't figure out what he's looking for up there at the plate. He looks as though he's Looking location as opposed to pitch. There are hitters that do that, whether it's fastball or breaking pitch. Neil Walker at first, McCutcheon up there with one away, and Gallardo hits the outside corner with a fastball. And that fastball in at 92 miles an hour. That's another good sign for Giovanni. Making his fourth start of the season against the Pirates. No secrets here. Gallardo's gone at least six innings in the first three starts. He's pitched well against him this year, but does not have a victory. Three no decisions in three starts. He made back to back starts against him in April. Six innings apiece, two earned runs in both of those starts. And then he started against Pittsburgh on May 15th at Miller Park. He went six and a third and allowed three earned runs. Brewers have won two of the three Gallardo starts this season. And not too many of the Brewer pitchers pitchers have bad numbers against the Pirates at least the ones that are currently with the ball club. I mean the Brewers have really been able to handle the Pirates pretty well over the last few years. And Yo's done well here. Tenth start at PNC Park and a five and three record. Now Los got the call on Friday. He struggled. Garza got the win yesterday. Gallardo's turn this afternoon as McCutcheon fouls it away. Another foul. McCutcheon hanging tough. Count remains at two balls, two strikes. Pitch count always a story with Gallardo as he tries to minimize his pitches. He, he's been throwing a lot of pitches in uh, five, six innings. That's one of the reasons he hasn't been able to have that, that deep outing. His longest outing of the year is seven innings. That was against San Diego. Took him 98 pitches to get through five innings against the Twins his last time out. Little half swing, did he go? No, he didn't, says the base umpire, Lance Barrett. Yeah, pitch count gets away from Garoto quite a bit, and he really doesn't have the strikeouts that he has had in the past. 
Only 52 strikeouts in a little over 70 innings of work and you can see on the curveball McCutcheon able to hold up a lot of check swings a lot of foul balls gets that pitch count up for Giovanni. Sun busting through here in the bottom of the first inning. That's a good sight. There goes Walker McCutcheon lines one and Weeks can't make the play. It's in the center field. That should have been a double play ball. I'm not sure what happened there. The ball was hit like a bullet. But Ricky didn't even have to move. It was right at him. And he got the glove up a little bit too late. Look at there's Ricky. Doesn't even have to move. He's right there. He just misses it. It should have been a double play, but it's first and third, only one out. There's a mistake by the Brewers. It's going to go down as a hit, but a play that Ricky, Ricky should have made. Well, the, Bre the Brewers do drop a level in defense with Weeks in the lineup compared to Scooter Jeanette, part of that left right platoon. Now it's first and third for Gabby Sanchez. And strike one to Sanchez, getting his first start. Ike Davis has been in there the last two games. And even with a right handed starter in Gallardo, Clint Hurdle going with Sanchez today. Going with the matchup. Ike Davis has struggled. Gabby Sanchez has hit Giovanni pretty well. He's got a couple of career home runs against Yo. Sanchez, a 267 hitter lifetime against Gallardo. And Ike Davis is 0 for his last 20 at the plate. And 0 for 8 lifetime against Gallardo. So you got a struggling hitter who struggles against this pitcher, and it makes it an easy decision for Clint Hurdle. Strike, a fastball in there. And two seamer right on the inside corner at the knees. Sanchez, a very patient hitter. He will take pitches, and there's another reason. Ivani's hey, pitch count gets up there. You got guys up there taking a lot. No balls, two strikes. Brewers looking for a ground ball to turn two here. And a check on McCutcheon. Always a threat to run. McCutcheon has not been thrown out this season. He is a perfect seven for seven in stolen base attempts. He and Marte, the two in the Pirates lineup that will run regularly. McCutcheon looks like he wants to go here. Stays put, and Sanchez takes a ball down and away. Twenty-eight year old Giovanni Gallardo, thirteenth start of the season. Been a workhorse for the Brewers. Has a career ERA of 375, but it's about a run less against the Pirates in his career. It's at 271 against Pittsburgh, lifetime. Sanchez into shallow right field. Braun's got a long way to go. He's got it. Tagging at third is Walker. The throw comes in. The tag and out. Braun cuts down Walker at the plate. A perfect throw. And it ends up as a double play to end the inning. Ryan Braun, an outfield assist as Walker cut down at the plate.
No. That's, he had the ball. That's actually a good thing. That's great. This is better for the Brewers. Wait a second. He had the baseball. Right. But, they, but you that's can, what they're trying to determine. So Hurl didn't want to use it. Well, as we went to break, there has been a crew chief review. This is not a challenge by Clint Hurdle, and it'll give us a chance to explain this rule here. So they're not going to look at this in New York, whether Walker's slide was in there or not. But, Rock, this is the new rule to try to protect catchers and base runners, and they're actually seeing if Jonathan Lucroy blocked off the plate. Without, without the baseball. I mean, you can have the baseball and block the plate. I mean, clearly has the baseball. He's turning around to make a tag, and I'm not sure. I mean, he clearly has the, the the baseball in his hand, and the foot is just standing there on top of home plate. Not sure what uh, they're going to do with respect to that, but we'll see. And the bigger question is, and the reason this matters, whether it's a crew chief review as it is here, or it's a manager's challenge. If it was a manager's challenge, this is my own interpretation of it. If it's a manager's challenge, you could look and see if Walker got his foot in in time. Mm -hmm. If yeah, it's a crew not, chief review, that's not what they're looking at. Yeah. Then you just determine if Luke Croy is blocking the plate, has the ball when he does that or not. So he had the ball well before Neil Walker was even close to home plate. This is a significant delay here. They've been looking at this the entire commercial break. Crew chief is Mike Everett, the taller of the two. He'll make the call here, and he's out at home plate, and the inning is over. Well, I'm not sure what took him so long. That was obvious. I think it's a little bit of strategy by Clint Hurdle, who wanted to, you know, not have to use a challenge, but see if he could get the call to go his way without having to use a challenge and to see if the catcher was blocking off the plate. This is a new rule this year blocking off the plate without the baseball. Right. That's the difference. That's the key. I mean he clearly had the baseball. I mean it wasn't even close. I'm not sure what took him so long. Now let's take you back to the play that ended it from the beginning. It was a fly ball to right with one out. Braun makes a catch our Southwest Airlines non stoppable play and a perfect strike. He's got the baseball. He's got the tag, and I'm not sure what that was. And you know, Neil Walker had plenty of time and opportunity to make a slide, and Luke Croy with the baseball, and it tags him out. And just for housekeeping's sake, that is not a manager's challenge for Hurdle, so he still has one to use. And had they said Luke Croy was blocking off home plate without the baseball, it would have been a run. Right. All right. Well, the idea is to get it right, and they got it right. It took a little bit of a delay, but they got it right. I would be curious, though, had a Hurdle issued a manager's challenge, whether he was safe or out. Yeah, yeah. Look, like he had the foot in there, didn't yeah. he? I don't know if the foot ever hit the ground. Was the only thing the foot came in and hit Lucroy's foot. So, but that really wasn't up for debate because uh, Clint Hurdle did not issue a challenge. Now, knowing Clint Hurdle, he might be saying, "All right, you guys owe me one now. You got to pick <laughs> me up later in the game." Well, he could have. Uh, he could have challenged the call, the slide save. He decided not to do that. So here we go to the second inning, and uh, Carlos Gomez, ready to lead off, patiently waiting. He's got the uh, Sunday skinnies on today. I, I see. A little bit humid for that, isn't it? I don't know. Those are his uh, his own issue. He breaks him out every now and then when he feels like it. <laughs> and lock on the first pitch, a bouncing ball to second. Walker makes a play, and one pitch and one out for Jeff Lock. Gomez retired. And something's bothering Carlos Gomez. Not sure what that's all about. So one away. 
And here is Aramis Ramirez. Having to dive uh, deep into the the rules and the bylaws on the new review schedule on a Sunday. That's that's not usually what we're looking for on a Sunday, is it? No, it's a, kind of the day of rest, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but they got it right. And you got the uh, the collisions at home plate. It's in the rule book, 7.13. Unless the catcher is in possession of the ball, the catcher cannot block the pathway of the runner as he is attempting to score. I mean, that was clear as day. I mean, there was no question that Luke Roy had the baseball. And I'm not sure what it took so long in New York to make that determination. Ramirez, a shot. They had him played over there in the hole, and Mercer will make the play to get Ramirez. Well positioned defenders for the Pirates. Hey, tickets are going fast for the Brewers. Big showdown with the Reds this Friday, June 13th through Sunday, the 15th. As Jonathan Lucroy leads the crew into action against the rivals from Cincinnati. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com or by calling 414-902-4000. That'll be the only three home games in this stretch of games in June, mostly on the road. 15 out of 18 games away from Miller Park. And 16 out of 19 days when you count in the off day tomorrow in New York. Tough stretch. Going to get a good sense of what this club's all about come June 23rd when they finally return home. So far on this first road trip in that stretch, the Brewers are two and two. Split in Minnesota. They split the first two games here in Pittsburgh. On their way to New York tomorrow and uh, starting a series against the Mets Tuesday. As Davis strikes out and Locke is dialed in early. Six up, six down with a couple of K's. from the two umpires involved in the challenge making sure that he's got it where he needs it and, uh, the call was upheld our Felco all-star up a voting update this is where they stand now after the second release of all-star voting you remember you can vote at brewers.com and you can vote up to 25 times per email account Jonathan Lucroy trying to become the first Brewers catcher to make the all-star team since Dave Nelson in 1999. That deserves it. I mean, Luke Roy has done everything that the Brewers have asked of him. He's been swinging a bat, you know, getting the Brewers pitching staff through games. He's done a great job calling the game. What else can he do? Of course, it's tough. You got Molina in front of him in the ballot. 
Excellent catcher here in Pittsburgh as well, Russell Martin. Numbers don't stack up offensively compared to Luke Roy. Martin's a former Gold Glove Award winning catcher back in 07 as a member of the Dodgers. Gallardo gets him to chase a breaking ball. Actually, Luke Roy has a better throw percentage this year than Russell Martin. Luke Roy uh, over 26%. That's a big improvement over his career numbers. I think a lot of that has to do with pitchers helping him out. One and two, and Martin takes a call at strike three. Gallardo spots the fastball and picks up his first K. And Martin likes to, you know, dive. He looking for that outside corner, and that one clearly on the inner half and gets rung up by Ed Hickox. That's a good pitch by Gallardo. You see Martin really leaning out over the plate trying to protect that outside corner. One gone for Pedro Alvarez. Alvarez, a 239 batting average to start play today, has 11 homers. He and Neil Walker tied for the Pirates' lead in home runs. Alvarez has always struggled against Gallardo. Pedro Alvarez has just two career hits in 26 at bats. That is an 077 batting average against Giovanni. Gallardo has struck him out 11 times as well in those 26 at bats. A lot of it's on that pitch right there. Good curveball. Yo's got a good one today. He's been able to throw it for strikes, for called strikes. It's always an important pitch for him every single time out. Alvarez has had a good series, has four hits. Including a double. Major League, or rather the National League leader in home runs last year. Chris Davis led the American League in homers. Alvarez hit 38 last season. Yeah, there's a swing and a miss. Gallardo gets him again on that breaking ball. Back to back K's for Giovanni, his first two of the day. Yeah, the first one was a get me over curveball. This is a little bit different, a little bit shorter, a little bit harder, and gets him to chase a pitch out of the strike zone. That's the strikeout curveball as opposed to the first one he threw. Well, he looks sharp today. He has good stuff going early. Two outs for Starling Marte. Has lost his everyday job in the outfield. He swings away early. Segura bobbles and Marte will reach. Gonna be an error on Gene Segura, E6. Brewers defense hasn't been helping Giovanni too much today. That line drive that Ricky should have had. Rolled to the base hit. This is probably should have ended the inning. Segura just can't handle it. He realizes he has to be quick because Marte can scoot down that line. Well, that'll bring up Jordy Mercer with a runner on and two away. Hit one of his three home runs earlier in this series and takes a strike from Gallardo. Mercer homered on Friday night at three RBIs Friday as well. He had his trouble defensively yesterday, too, committed the first error, first of five errors on the day for the Pirates yesterday. Matched a season high in the major leagues this year. Marte goes. Mercer skies one into left center. And it'll be Gomez to make the catch, and that will retire the side. Gallardo is off to a good start. We head to the third.
So scoreless as the seven, eight, and nine hitters are due up for the Brewers. Let's take a look at our Powerball home run leaderboard. And the Brewers' eighth place hitter, Mark Reynolds, leads the way with 13 home runs. You see the others that follow Carlos Gomez, Chris Davis, and Ryan Braun. And speaking of the lineup, Rod Renicki said this is the most effective lineup shuffling he's ever experienced. All the guys have taken off ever since the lineup had been shuffled around. And he said ideally he wanted to find a way to get Braun back in the three hole and Aramis batting cleanup. But the other guys that occupy those spots won't allow him. And he said as for Gomez, that's the hardest part because he's been successful everywhere he's been in the lineup and he would like to have him in that leadoff spot but Carlos wants to stay in that cleanup hole yeah, and they're uh, they're forcing his hand as weeks on the first pitch flies out to center field and it's important to, to mention it it's not as though they refuse to move because right, right. Ron's asking him, but the success of the lineup has forced Ron ready to keep it the way it is he's not even asking him to move right right and you got to give credit to the manager who has a sense about that there are a lot of managers over the years who would be stubborn and they would uh, put the lineup in that they envisioned out of spring training. But Renicki's uh, he does a good job uh, being willing to adjust and he senses flow of season flow of series. He talks a lot about the rhythm of a lineup lineup continuity. We've talked a lot about it on the air because he does. But it has made a significant mark on this club. Remember the Brewers had lost four consecutive games in Atlanta when he made that lineup change and uh, Milwaukee has played very well since that time. Mark Reynolds a big wave and a miss. Yeah, Locke's got a nice change up today and Brewers have had a tough time with that pitch. Struck out Braun on a change up and that was a good one right there to through to Reynolds. Reynolds batting eighth and leading the club in home runs. While batting eighth, as you saw on the Powerball home run leaderboard. 13 homers, 28 driven in for Reynolds. Did not start yesterday. Overbay got the call at first. Reynolds did get a couple of at bats off the bench. Shallow right field. Harrison got a late break, but is there to make the play for out number two. Hey, it's always Miller time in the Miller Light Beer Pen. Fans who sit in the Miller Light Beer Pen. For this Friday's game against the Reds, we'll get a free Miller Lite Brewers retro cap. To reserve your spot in the beer pen, visit brewers.com slash beer pen. A free Miller Lite Brewers retro hat, not cap. Just to be, you know, letter of the, uh, the read here. Oh. Didn't want to confuse anybody. Oh, I, was, I was totally in agreement. But a cap is a hat, right? Yeah. Is a hat a cap? Uh-huh. Okay. In most cases. A cap can be a lot of other things too. So can a hat. Gallardo pulls one foul. 0 oh and 2 to Giovanni Gallardo. I think you're overthinking it a little bit, especially on a Sunday. Yeah. What's that? That's a hat. A baseball hat, baseball cap. <laughs> Gallardo and oh Walker lays out to his feet and gets Gallardo saves a hit nine up nine down for Jeff Locke to start.
brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Marshfield Clinic, don't just live, shine. And by Gerhardt's, the kitchen and bath store. Find inspiration for your home, remodel, or new construction project at Gerhardt's. To the bottom of the third we go from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. No score. Jeff Locke has retired the lineup in order first time through for the Pirates. Nine up, nine down with two strikeouts. Excellent play by Neil Walker to Rob Gallardo of a hit. So Giovanni's back at it. He'll face Locke to start it. And then back to the top of the order, Josh Harrison and Neil Walker. Had an exciting beginning to this game. Ryan Braun cutting down a runner at the plate in the first inning. His second outfield assist of the season. And what ended up as a double play to end it. Pirates threatened in that first inning with two on and one out. A play that went to a crew chief challenge or crew chief review to see if Lucroy was blocking the plate or not, which he was not. And there's a base hit. So lock. Having everything go his way early. Pitching well. Now he singles. And a leadoff base hit against Gallardo in the third. And both pitchers making good contact their first at bats. Hey, a reminder, a reminder to set your compass due north Thursday nights on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Join Bill and Laura. Not Bill Schroeder, Bill Shirt. They'll take a look at the stories and adventures of outdoor enthusiasts in the upper Midwest. Do North Outdoors Thursdays on Fox Sports Wisconsin. I can talk fishing if I have to. Sure. I could see you on that show at some point. You might be a nice, that might be a good offseason gig for you. I'd like to do it. Hint, hint. <laughs> as long as it's not ice fishing. Here's Josh Harrison, Pirates leadoff hitter. Harrison. Grounded out his first time up. That's how the game started offensively for Gallardo. Giovanni's given up two hits. He's hit a batter. And Segura committed an error. In the air to right. Easy enough for Braun. Almost in his tracks for the first out. Yeah, we didn't even really have time to talk about how good of a throw Ryan Braun made back in that first inning. Uh, you knew it was going to be close because Ryan has a very accurate arm. He's able to get rid of it quickly. That is our, that's because of his days in the infield. But uh, tough to run on Ryan when he has an opportunity to throw one in from right field. And not a lot of base runners challenge Braun, which is why he only has two assists. Very strong throwing arm. Cuts down a potential run in the first. Here's Neil Walker. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. We take you back to that throw by Braun. Fly ball to right from Sanchez and Braun on a dime right to Lucroy. Did a nice job hanging in there. He gave him a perfect hop. A nice, uh, nice hop for him. Lucroy able to drop the tag and. Neil Walker out at home plate. And they had to take a look at it to make sure Luke Curry had the ball before he blocked it off. Let's go to the replay. So just for clarification, let's say that throw is coming in from left field. And it's a touch later than that. And Luke Roy's in that same position without the ball. You think they would have called him safe? They might have. Can't block the plate without the baseball. Now that's kind of an ambiguous term. Blocking the home plate. Now, what does that mean, right? Blue Crow was standing right on top of the plate, mm -hmm. so he gave him the back part of the plate to slide to. I maybe. guess. I guess that's what you could look at. But he clearly had the baseball a good two strides before Walker was even oh. at the plate. It's a tough one to call. That's yeah, why is. they go to review now because it's tough on a home plate umpire to see that. And yeah, they're looking at a lot of different things. And there is language in there that says. That if the throw takes the catcher across the plate, then he's not blocking. But in this case, well, he's blocking right now, but he can because he has the baseball. I thought the bigger question was was Walker's foot across the plate before the tag went on the knee, but Clint Hurdle didn't challenge that. And Walker draws the walk, so he's aboard for the second time. 
Walker coming in there and. I mean that that could have gone Pittsburgh's way had. Hurdle made an official challenge on that but he chose not to he was I assume hoping that. The crew chief review would uh, overturn the call but yeah, those are the kind of calls I mean safe and out on a call like that is not why they put replay in place. It's the obvious missed calls that they're talking about you're talking about a plate to plate. Luke Roy clearly has the baseball well in advance of the of the runner getting to home plate. And that's always been an out. Two on for McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon singled his last time up. He hit a shot. But it should have been caught actually. It was a line drive right at Ricky Weeks. And uh, just went right off the top of his glove, the tip of his glove, and out into center field. So we have the technology to measure. The exit velocity or impact velocity off the bat. And McCutcheon's line drive came off the bat at 102 miles an hour. Yeah, he stung that baseball for sure. In Ricky's defense. And the other thing in Ricky's defense, the second base umpire was right in line with the batter and Ricky Weeks. He was standing pretty much right there. That might have fooled Ricky a little bit. Went right over the umpire's head, and Ricky not able to get the glove up in time. Yeah, that's a good look at it. Yeah. It's about where he was. Now Gallardo behind in the count, two on and one away and a swing and a miss. Gallardo gets it up to 90 miles an hour with that cut fastball of his. That's why he calls it a cutter and not a fastball because he has just enough. He doesn't snap the wrist to make it spin down and away. He just kind of tweaks it at release. Position of his fingers on the baseball, and you know that gives it just the slightest rotation. Bouncing ball fouled towards third. It doesn't spin like a slider. It spins just a little bit, just to get about maybe what three or four inches of a break, just enough to keep the baseball off the barrel of the bat. Gallardo issuing a single to the pitcher lock to start the inning. He's at second. Walker walked. Pirates threatening here in the third. Two on, one out, and their best hitter at the plate. McCutcheon bounces one foul. Kids Day. At PNC today. Great to see the sun shining. They had the tarp down for a while. No batting practice today. Got canceled. Tarp was on the field and heavy rains came through here. About an hour to 30 minutes before the game. But we're okay to start this early part of the game anyway. Yeah, they're saying there's two bands that are supposed to go through Pittsburgh today. One has gone through. There's one coming up. Whether it hits Pittsburgh. And the ballpark remains to be seen. Got a big wind blowing out the left. Making a normally pitcher friendly ballpark a little more hitterish. Long battle here McCutcheon and Gallardo. And the 2 2 again. And another foul ball for McCutcheon. Well, these are the kind of at bats that can sap a pitcher if it results in a hit. To get him out feels a lot better. It's worth it. We have eight pitches already. Hasn't dropped the curveball on him yet. 50 pitches overall for Yabani. Third inning. And only one out in the third. Two on, one away. Gallardo delivers, and McCutcheon pops it up. That'll be Segura and infield fly rule is called. Batter out automatically. And finally through the curveball got him. A steady diet of cutters and sliders. 
And then on a 2 2 count, they would have dropped the curveball on him and he was out in front. So two men are out. Still 2 1, and here is Gabby Sanchez. Sanchez flew out to right his last time up. That started the double play that ended the inning. Braun throwing out Walker at the plate. And there are a lot of scenarios in the big leagues where Sanchez would have easily had an RBI in that spot. But it was a great throw by Braun. And Neil Walker not blessed with the best speed either. If that's McCutcheon running at third base. He probably does have an RBI. Might have had a collision at home plate. <laughs> <laughs> and the outcome might have been different. Skips away. Lucroy stares lock back. That's a pitcher running at second. And smart base running not to try to take the extra base with and two outs. Another area where the Brewers have been outstanding this year. Minimizing the wild pitches. Lucroy Maldonado doing a bang up job. Keeping pitches in the dirt close. The fifth fewest wild pitches in all the National League. And it's not because of a lack of pitches in the dirt. There's been a lot. Testament to the, the two catchers. Brewers have a day off tomorrow. Luke Roy certainly looking forward to that. He just had a day off on Tuesday. He's been playing a lot though had a stretch of 20 straight games where he was in the lineup. There's a strike three and one to Sanchez. Lucroy is all fired up because his alma mater Louisiana Lafayette has a chance to go to the College World Series. They're up one game to none in that best of three series in the Super Regional against Ole Miss. On the corner, strike two. Guy just can't wait to walk, huh? I mean, that was a perfect pitch on the outside corner. You don't blame him for taking it, but trying to coach a walk. Come on now. Might have got the benefit of a call right there. According to Fox Tracks, anyway. Full count. Gallardo trying to strand a pair. Runners go and a called strike three. Sanchez rung up by Ed Hickox and not pleased. Giovanni comes back, gets his third K and strands two buckos. Not been able to get a base runner on against Jeff Locke. Hey, and today's Tavern of the Game winner, Surfside Bowl, 
in Kenosha. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Light beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. Well, moving along here as we head to the fourth inning, Gallardo pitching out of a jam last inning. That was started by Jeff Locke, who singled. Locke has retired nine in a row with two strikeouts. Jeff Locke has 29 pitches through the first three innings, partner. His career average pitches per inning is 16. Yeah. He's got a good changeup today. He's keeping the Brewers hitters off balance. We'll see how the Brewers adjust second time through. Locke made one start at the big league level against the Giants. Went right back to Triple A, and the Pirates called him back up for this start today. And the Brewers finally back to the top of their order as we go to the fourth. So Segura, Braun, and Lucroy coming up. Segura flew out to center field in the first inning. Scoreless game at PNC Park. Great to see the sun still shining. There's a strike. 0 oh and 2 on Segura. He's thrown nothing but fastballs and changeups. That's it. And a bouncing ball. Walker ranges over. They had Segura to pull. So Walker has to move to his glove side to make that play. And that's 10 in a row retired by Locke. Now you got to figure the troubles for Locke last year after the All Star break had to be injury related. You just, you know, you don't see guys just fall off like that. I mean, he made the All Star team for a reason. Right. He was a dominant pitcher in the first half last year. Yep, eight and two, and earned run average just a little over two. And another thing is, you know, how many, how many did he make any adjustments as the league started to get accustomed to what he was throwing up there at the plate? And change ups, fastballs, and he's doing that today. We'll see if the Brewers are able to get a better read on his pitches second time through this batting order. Pitching coach Ray Searage, former Brewer, has done a good job with his pitching staff as Braun lines one right to Mercer for the second out. Two up, two down, and 11 in a row. And he's making it look easy. Really hasn't fallen behind too much in the count to any of the hitters yet. Two quick outs. Here comes Lucroy. By the way, if you're bumping around the television tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central. Jonathan Lucroy is going to be on MLB Network. He'll be on the show MLB Now. That'll air from 3 to 4 in the Central Time Zone. It's a live broadcast, kind of a round table with Brian Kenny. And Lucroy will be a guest panelist. He'll be joined by Al Leiter and Joel Sherman. And good that uh, Lucroy is starting to get some recognition for being the player that he is. Now Brian Kenny's going to love Jonathan Lucroy going into the the metrics. He's got plenty of metrics in his favor, especially if you're talking about an all star bid. Lucroy, one of the most productive catchers offensively in the major leagues. And there's a called strike. Boy, lock is locked in. Yes, he is. That one on the in there half of the play. Lucroy looking for something away. Maybe the changeup. It can be a dangerous pitch for a left-handed pitcher because if you don't hit that corner, that's the one that usually ends up in the seats. Especially with the wind blowing out the left. Two and two now. Back in there he goes. And Lucroy got jammed. Little roller out toward third. Alvarez bare hands, and Lucroy is safe. There's a way to lose a no hitter. So that'll be a base hit. I think Locke thought it hit Luke Croy first and was a foul ball, but no, it's a base hit. 
I think he beat it right in, right into the ground in front of home play and Luke Corey with that great speed able to beat it out. Let's see. Yeah, right off the front of the plate. A little dribble down the line with Alvarez playing deep. That'll be the first hit for the Brewers today. Take them any way you can get them. After Locke retired 11 straight, the Brewers finally have a base runner. And here is Carlos Gomez now. Gomez having another big year. Passing the third of the season marker. 12 homers, 35 driven in for Gomez. And another big cut and a miss. Out of his helmet he goes. Oh, and two to Gomez. Lucroy takes off. Gomez takes a ball. And Lucroy will walk into second with a stolen base. And Russell Martin thought that was strike three. He walked off toward the dugout. And Ed Hickox, not a big fan of that. Let's see. Let's see where it is. That's a pretty good pitch. That's tough to take. Third stolen base for Lucroy. And a base hit could bring a run in for the Brewers. Gomez, little jam shot on a hop, in and out of the glove of Walker. Gomez is safe, and Lucroy will hold up at third. Right, how about those two base hits for the Brewers? A couple of knuckle busters, <laughs> and two on with two out. And a little, just a little bit over more toward the hole. That would have been a run. And Lucroy made a big turn around third base, but once Walker recognized where it was, picks it up, and Eddie Cedar tells him to stay at third base. Well, the Pirates thought they had a called strike three to end the inning. Instead, Locke with two on behind him. First and third, two away with Aramis Ramirez coming up. Well, this will be a good test for Ramirez to see uh, how far back he is coming back from the disabled list. It's one of the better. Fastball hitters the Brewers have, especially on that inside corner. He can turn on them with the best of them. Yeah, which is probably why they're not going to mess around in there too much. Well, that's a tight zone right now. Russell Martin get a little bit perturbed. That was a good change up on the outside corner. Russell Martin not looking into the dugout. He's talking to the home plate umpire. First time Locks had to pitch out of the stretch here today after that infield hit by Lucroy. The former Pirate, Aramis Ramirez, at the plate. And another check on Gomez. Carlos always a threat to run, and when he goes, he's usually safe. Gomez has 11 steals this year, he's only been caught twice. There he goes back inside catches the corner. Yeah. Change up away fastball in. Classic pitching sequence. He really hasn't missed out over the plate yet either with it. If he misses he misses inside but not by much. It's good pitching. One ball one strike. And there goes Gomez and Ramirez pops it up. He got in on his hands. And Locke will work around a couple of infield hits. We remain scoreless in Pittsburgh. We head to the bottom of the fourth.
downtown settings. Got a great view of it here from way up high at PNC Park from the booth. No score as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Our carsoup.com trivia question Who was the last Brewers starting pitcher to strike out 10 or more batters in a game? That's a good one. I think it's been a while. 10 K's or more in a game this year. Gallardo's best strikeout game was uh, 14. He did that against the Pirates a couple of years ago. Stay tuned for the answer. I don't think there's been one this year. Here's Russell Martin to start it for Pittsburgh. Well, you've been at every game, so I don't think there has been one this year. Didn't Marco have 10 strikeouts last year against Cincinnati? That might be a good guess. Nine or ten. I know Garza's season high for K's is nine, so we can take him out of the mix. Yeah, there hasn't been one this year. Gallardo used to be a regular in the 10 strikeout performance. Matter of fact, he's done it 17 times in his career. So far today, Gallardo with three strikeouts. Had back to back K's in the second. He punched out Sanchez to end the threat in the third. Yeah, season high for Giovanni this year, seven against the Yankees. That's inside and it hits Russell Martin. So Martin, who struck out looking on an inside fastball in the second inning, gets drilled by one this time. And both of these pitchers trying to establish inside. Russell Martin, I don't know how bad or how much he tried to get out of the way. Kind of threw his arm out there, didn't he? He's got that big pad on there. That's not going to hurt. Buttermaker would be proud. Took one for the team. Mm -hmm. Here's Alvarez now. Gallardo has been in the stretch a lot here early, but he has good stuff. You, know, you wonder if they outlaw those pads like that, if players would be willing to do that still. Mm -hmm. They're not as big as they used to be. The baseball has limited the size of those elbow pads. Remember that one Barry Bonds used to wear? A suit of armor. <laughs> Gallardo had a win against Baltimore. And his last start at home, or rather, in his uh, start prior to his loss against the Twins. A bouncer, Gallardo's got it. Good play to second for one. Segura's throw to first in time. Nicely done on both counts. Gallardo to Segura. Yeah, very uh, unusual turn for Gene Segura. He was playing right behind the bag and watch Giovanni. Gives him a good throw before he's there. And then the footwork gets messed up a little bit, but still has enough on the throw to get Alvarez at first base. Good pick by Yo, good throw, and they're able to turn a double play. Now that's the one area of the shifting that still has to be reconciled a little bit. I don't know any other way to do it, but it does take away a lot of hits, no question. But it does make for some very awkward plays at the bag, force plays, uh, the beginning of a double play. And yeah, that's a natural, you know, move for a second baseman. Segura is usually. More accustomed to having his momentum going toward first base and making a throw. Not the way he did it. He was coming right at home plate. That's why you have to have some pretty good versatile athletes able to you know improvise out there on the fly to be able to you know shift like that. I mean Segura could go across the bag at second from a normal position in his sleep. He wouldn't even have to think about where the base is. As he's trying to catch a ball, which is what he's doing in a double play. If it comes from the pitcher, you know, he's concentrating on the ball. He's not having to worry about where the base is because he just knows he's done it so often. Right. But when you're coming from that angle, it's a little bit different. Well, they practice that. I mean, they practice the shifting and the different ways of turning double plays. Marte, they'll ask if he goes. He did not. Able to check his swing, says Lance Barrett.
Now this is a guy the Brewers have to control today. He has been in a very long slump. They've even used the word lost at the plate concerning Marte. He is 0 for his last 21. He reached on an error his last time up. So hitless in his last 21 at bats, and he has not played much lately. Clint Hurdle has uh, taken him out of the starting lineup. This is his first start of the series. Hurdle's been going with Tabata in left field. They gave a five year contract to Marte last season. Counting on him to be the everyday complement to McCutcheon in center. And things have gone south for him this year. It's even been some talk he might go to the minor leagues. And down he goes. Gallardo gets him to chase. Fourth strikeout for Gallardo. Chris Davis will lead the way, one of the hottest hitters in the big leagues lately. He'll start it for the crew in a scoreless game. top of the fifth inning time to check in with the crew in the community major league baseball people magazine and target are looking for outstanding teachers in your community 30 teachers will be celebrated at the 2014 all-star game july 15th on fox log on to allstarteachers.com to nominate your favorite teacher today and get them to minneapolis for this year's all-star game wish we could send them all we appreciate the hard work that all of you teachers do each and every year. Great responsibility. School coming to an end for a lot of the public schools in uh, Wisconsin this coming week. Hallelujah, the teachers say. <laughs> oh, they, the, they don't really say that. And the parents, right? Oh, no, it's the other way for the parents. Thanks to have the kids around all summer. <laughs> Chris Davis takes a strike. Well, Jeff Locke working out of a jam in the fourth. He gave up two infield hits with two outs. But retired Ramirez still scoreless. Down goes Davis. And he doesn't like that call from Ed Hickox. Third strikeout for Locke. Now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Wispan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. You should start sending us some uh, some pictures from your final week of school all you teachers out there. We'll find a way to get it on the air. All the party hats on the kids. Having a good time. No don't put the kids in there just the, the group of teachers. No kids. It's kids day here at the ballpark. Yes it is. Don't dismiss the kids. The uh, the pitch of the cheering is up a couple of octaves. Yeah, right? yeah. Having a blast. 
Ricky Weeks takes one inside. Well, it might be imperative to uh, grab the lead here shortly. Getting a little dark in the threatening skies up above starting to roll in. <laughs> and we're up in the cloud, so we can report that before it actually hits the ground. Right. It's the one advantage of being this high. And there we are. See us waving. No fan higher than us here at PNC. I love everything about this ballpark. Except the uh, position of the booth, but it does give you a great view of downtown. Yes, it does. Inside the weeks. Cool downtown setting. That's our view, too. Yeah, that camera's in our booth. It's my hand. <laughs> Directors hate when you do that. Right. And that's inside, ball four. So weeks draws the walk. And just getting ready to say how Jeff Flock's been able to command that inside corner. And as soon as you say that, he's missed a couple of times on that corner. Fastballs in, change ups away, and that's pretty much been it against the Brewers so far today. He's a good command of both of them. So Mark Reynolds with a runner at first. First walk issued by Locke to go along with three strikeouts and two infield hits. Reynolds flew out to right. Shallow right in the third inning. See Reynolds wearing that wrap on his right arm. He was hit by a pitch yesterday. He got two plate appearances, even though he didn't start the game. And a little half swing, he goes. And it's one and two. Reynolds took one right on the forearm yesterday. And obviously still bothered him a little bit today with that wrap, that compression wrap, trying to keep the swelling down. And took one at first base yesterday. But not in the hand or the arm. Inside just missed. Locke has not made too many mistakes so far today. Reynolds would love to get one here with two strikes. Got Weeks at first. He takes off and he's picked off. Sanchez to second. And Weeks is out. And that will officially go down as a caught stealing. One to three to six. And it wipes out the Brewers base runner. One to three to four, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Locke well, 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 with a pretty good move over there. Ricky showing his hand a little bit too early and an easy tag over there for Walker. Not even close, not a big lead, too big of a jump. And an easy out at second base. Well, the pitch was well, the throw to first, getting weeks on first movement. The 2 2 pitch on the way, and Reynolds strikes out. So a walk is eliminated, and two strikeouts for Locke.
PNC Park on the shores of the river. And a reminder, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Brewers may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Milwaukee Brewers. Carsoup.com trivia, the last Brewer starting pitcher to strike out 10 or more in a game. And he is a current Milwaukee Brewer. Wow. Just brought him up. Mike Fires got to go back to 2012. Had a 10 strikeout performance against the Astros. Yeah, so it wasn't Marco last year. How about that? Good question. Very timely. Good to see Fires back in the big leagues. Takes the roster spot of Tyler Thornburg, who is on the disabled list. And we'll be heading back for a test on his elbow. Gallardo back to work in a scoreless game, bottom of the fifth inning. Jordy Mercer will lead it off, then the pitcher lock, and then back to the top of the order in Josh Harrison. Mercer flew out to center his last time up. Gallardo's given up just two hits. McCutcheon had a line drive single to center and then Locke, the pitcher had a base hit a single to the opposite field. But there have been some base runners today against Gallardo. He's hit two batters. There's been a walk and a Segura error. So hasn't had that clean one two three inning. Today at the Pirates 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position that was an issue for Pittsburgh. Yesterday, they had men on base, just couldn't come up with a big hit. In the right field, Braun is over. And Mercer retired for out number one. That'll bring up Locke. Locke put a nice swing on the ball his last time up. A little opposite field singled into left center. Hasn't hit a lot in his career, but he's batting under a hundred lifetime. Kind of up and down for a couple of years with the Pirates. Last year. Spent a little time in the minor leagues, but establishing himself as a big league starter last year, even though he had a, a bad finish to the season, he still made 30 starts. And hasn't been much of a hitter throughout his career. Seven for 66. And a called strike three. Lock watches him go by. Two outs for Gallardo, his fifth strikeout. Hey, Friday the 13th is your lucky day at Miller Park. All fans in attendance to see the Brewers take on the Reds will receive a Brewers retro T-shirt courtesy of Husco International. For tickets, call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com. That's this Friday against the Reds. Your lucky day. My lucky day. Yep. Friday the 13th. I have no problem staying on the 13th floor of any hotel. Most hotels don't have a 13th floor. <laughs> There's a strike to Harrison. Our hotel here doesn't have floors five through thirteen. Right. There's it's no floor. It must be a parking garage. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I thought we were stuck on the elevator the other day when it just stopped counting after four. Got to the hotel here in Pittsburgh on uh, Thursday night, and I told the guys to push. Floor number 10. I realized that there wasn't a number 10, and that was the floor I was on <laughs> at the other hotel in Minnesota. Nice. Yeah, it happens that way. Tell me that doesn't happen to you See? once in a while. Where do those floors go? Yeah. We've been at that hotel too. Two quick outs for Gallardo. 
Harrison at the plate and the 2 1 foul back. Right down the middle. Harrison missed it. Well, Yavani's been having such good command with the slider and a curveball that these hitters for the Pirates are going up there looking off speed, and that's why he's able to rush that fastball by him. Even when he throws it down the middle. See what it gives him here. Two and two. In the right. And Braun is there. And that will retire the side. So Gallardo gets his quick in. One, two, three, go the Pirates. Ball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite. Now in the original can, it's Miller time. PNC Park, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A lot of peas in there. No score as we head to the sixth inning. And the Brewers coming up. A pitcher's duel going. Just to add one more P in that. Jeff Locke and Giovanni Gallardo hooked up in a dandy. Gallardo will lead the way for the Brewers. Was robbed of a hit on an excellent play by Neil Walker. Back in the third inning. As the dark clouds start to roll in. Brewers try to put one on the board in this sixth inning. And a swing and a miss. Gallardo down on strikes. Threw him the Fosh. And Gallardo is Locke's fifth strikeout victim. As promised earlier in the broadcast, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. And today it comes from Mike. And there's a cat who likes to watch the Brewers on television. <laughs> Kind of a mean looking cat. I'm sure he's not, but he's he's got a little fish eye going there, doesn't he? It's all brought to you by AT&T. Don't forget, use the hashtag WISFANPHOTO. Had a picture of you yesterday for your birthday. Yep. Did you enjoy your birthday dinner last night? I did. Night? That was nice. Had to pay for everyone, but yeah, it's like making a hole in one. Okay. No, Rock picked up the tab yesterday. Very nice. Appreciate that, partner. Picked up part of it. Everybody paid but you. Why don't we just uh, <laughs> I love that. say it like it is? That's the best. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Sick her up. Down on the count, one and two. Locks had Segura's number today. Gene is 0 for 2. The one two pitch and a bouncer right back to the mound. Two up two down for Locke. Well 
you just never know when you show up at the ballpark. Today was figuring to be the day for the hitter. Wind blowing out. A pitcher just up from Triple A in lock. Gallardo coming off his worst start of the year. Yeah, Lock had an earned run average over four down in the minor leagues. He's found something today. More hits than innings pitched down in the minor leagues. And he's right on the top of his game today so far. Back inside to Ryan Braun. He misses this time. Brewers put up a threat in the fourth inning. A couple of infield hits. They had runners. At first and third, actually second and third with two outs after a stolen base by Luke Croy as Braun lines one to second. Two line drive outs for Ryan Braun and a quick three up, three down, six for Locke. in the books big play here in this game came in the very first inning two on one out fly ball to right Braun cut down Walker trying to score ended up as an inning ending double play and then the pitchers locked in Jeff Locke has a shutout going through the first six innings with five K's two hits allowed Gallardo's only given up two hits and Gallardo with five strikeouts through the first five innings that's our setup Toyota game summary. We're on our way to the bottom of the sixth inning with no score. We have big offense in the first two games of the series and nothing but zero so far today. I like a good pitcher's duel from time to time. Makes every pitch, every play matter that much more. One run could win a game like this, especially with the talent of the bullpens for each club. Pirates and the Brewers have very good relievers in a winning scenario. Brewers have good relievers in any scenario, but you take a lead late, and uh, these two bullpens are tough to come back on. So certainly don't want to fall behind at this point of the game. It's been all quiet out there so far. Pirates won the opener 15 to 5. That was Friday night. Yesterday, the Brewers in an afternoon game beat them 9-3. Walker's been a tough out for Gallardo. He's been on twice. Was hit by a pitch. And he walked. Stands right on top of the plate, does Walker. There's a strike. Got one in there. They're taking the fastball quite a bit, aren't they? They're thinking curveball, slider. Ronnie's got him thinking off speed. The benefit of being able to throw those pitches for strikes. Now Gallardo hit Walker with a breaking ball in the first inning. And down he goes. He got him on a 
Slider a cut fastball to punch him out. So Walker is down on strikes. Number six for Gallardo. I got him with a short little curveball right there, going straight down. Maybe a slider. Couldn't tell, but Walker just waves at it on a pitch out of the zone. One out for Andrew McCutcheon. Starts him with a curveball in there for strike one. This is the best curveball he's had all year. No question. Maybe that in a couple of years. Best fastball, too, since early in the season as far as location. He's got some velocity going. Yeah. And he zips one in right there at 93 with a fastball for a strike. And right down the middle, not even thinking about swinging because you're thinking off speed. He and Lucroy are uh, zoned in right now. They're on the same page. Got him. McCutcheon strikes out. Gallardo on three pitches. Seventh K of the game for Giovanni. And this is a slider this time. Curveball, fastball, slider. See you later, Andrew McCutcheon. First two were strikes, the last one was not. Hey, a reminder don't miss Fox Sports Live as the crew brings you the latest news and highlights from a full day of MLB, NBA, and NHL action. Fox Sports Live nightly, FS1, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Thrilling finish in the Stanley Cup Finals last night. Kings winning in double overtime. Up two games to done now on the Rangers. Got NBA playoffs. Game two tonight. Spurs heat from an air conditioned AT&T Center in San Antonio, I think. <laughs> How about that? All the uh, ruckus that was created by that. LeBron James not able to finish. Taking some uh, quote unquote heat for it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice rock. Nice play on words right there. No balls two strikes and Sanchez rolls one foul. You're a basketball fan again right. Oh yeah. Now that the uh, Spurs are back in the final. I got a lot of sweat equity in the Spurs organization. Yeah, 14 years as uh, part of that organization. In many different roles. You got to let it go though. No, no. Those are my people. Are they? They're all still the same people. Well, still plus, there. You, plus you got thrust back into the NBA culture too. Right. I mean that probably. Brought up some old feelings, right? Yeah. A lot of former Spurs employees out there. Working elsewhere. Here's the one two and Sanchez fouls it away. Gallardo just pouring in the strikes right now. In this sixth inning. He's made 13 pitches and 11 of them are for strikes. Yeah. Well, if he's able to get through this inning quickly he might be able to go out for the seventh. Gallardo has faced the minimum since he walked Walker in the third inning. There's another strike. He's got the Pirates in swing mode right now. And he's been very effective with the fastball inside. You don't see Giovanni do that all that often, effectively anyway. Because the curveball and the slider have been for strikes, he's been able to jam him with the fastball in. You can only do that if you have good command outside and off speed. The one two bouncer to Weeks. Nice easy hop for him. And Gallardo, a 15 pitch inning, 13 strikes. Three up, three down with a couple of K's, and we are still scoreless.
Each club with two hits. Brewers home run count at 65 this season. Powerball home run count. Brewers among the National League leaders in that category. Yeah, Brewers haven't hit a home run in this series. They scored nine runs yesterday without the benefit of a home run. A bunch of extra base hits, but no long ball stuck on 65 here in Pittsburgh. That's where it stands right now. The Rockies at 79 home runs. You can understand that. The Giants a bit of a surprise there. They continue to swing the bat bats well. Got Michael Morse leading their charge. Well, here we go to the seventh. It's Lucroy to lead off. Scoreless ball game. Lucroy reached on an infield hit and stole a base in the fourth. He's one out of two. Block has only one walk today. That was Ricky Weeks in the fifth. As Lucroy into left field, little floater's gonna go, go, fall go, 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 go. fair. And a fan reaches over and grabs the baseball. And that'll be a double for Jonathan Lucroy. And now he's going to have to explain to his lady friend why they have to leave their seats. Uh, Clint Herder might want to take another look at this uh, down the left field line. Now, Mike Garrett, the third base umpire, was right there, made the call. Lucroy out in front of a changeup from Locke. That's been a good pitch for him. Keeps the bat in the hitting zone long enough. Luke Croy thought it might have gone foul, but nope, he calls it fair, and because the fan touched it, he gets into second base. So I got a replay question for you, and they're not going to review it here, but had they gone to review and it had proven to be a foul ball, then the fan gets to stay, right? <laughs> he gets to stay in his seats based on a review. I guess, yeah. yeah if you touch a fair ball, they will usually... Remove remove you from your seats. Well, maybe they'll let it slide this time. So that's a double for Lucroy. Fan interference and here's Gomez now. Gomez into center field hit sharply. McCutcheon's there. Lucroy's going to tag. Here comes the throw and Lucroy is just safe. Great throw from McCutcheon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're not kidding. That was a tremendous throw. Wow. All the way on the fly. He was moving in the other direction, a little bit off balance. And look at his throw right on the money. And Lucroy barely able to get in there safely. Well, that's why he's an MVP. Not just a hitter. Has won a gold glove. Gomez won it last year in center field. The year before that, it was McCutcheon. But that's a big base for the Brewers. Lucroy now at third base with one out. Infield in for Ramirez. Got to cash him in at a spot like this. And Ramirez pulls one foul. This continues to stay in on the hands of these Brewers hitters. Well, if he goes with his pattern that he's been establishing all day, he's going to go change up away here. Fastball in, change up away. That's pretty much the way he's been rocking the boat here. Infield in and still the shift against Ramirez. Q shot right side and it's gloved by Sanchez out at first but Lucroy scores. So the Brewers on the board first today in the seventh inning. And it's fitting that a run scores on a ball like that a little squibber over to first base. It's an RBI for Ramirez. And one of the few times you hit a ball like that and you hope it stays fair. There's no way that Sanchez was going to be able to get Lucroy. So the Brewers take a one to nothing lead, and he did exactly what we talked about. Fastball in, change up away. Ramirez is able to get enough of it to score the run. Heck of a play by Sanchez, who was way over towards second base to glove that ball. So Ramirez is the second out. A run is in. Two outs, nobody on for Davis. Yeah, that fan interference could play big. I'm not sure Lucroy makes it to second. You know, it was a tweener because Lucroy had stopped as Davis into right center field. Harris is over. 
And he'll make the catch for the out. The Brewers get a run. Ground out in an RBI by Ramirez. It's 1-0. Presented by Chevy. Enjoy. Take me out to the ball game here at PNC. Hey, a Bob Euchre sighting right there. Nice. Big crowd today here at PNC. They'll have over 35,000 as the Brewers have just taken the lead, one to nothing, a tight one. And now we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Gallardo back to work. Jonathan Lucroy, a leadoff double, fan interference, goes to third on a fly ball by Gomez, scores on a ground out by Ramirez. The impressive numbers for Giovanni Gallardo today. And he's had his best curveball that we've seen all season long, and because of that, he's been able to get some outs with the fastball. The fastball command has been tremendous and continues good success against a Pittsburgh Pirate Club that he's been able to rack up 11 wins in his career. And we'll see how he gets through here in the seventh inning. Any sign of trouble, you figure the bullpen. Would come into play, but if Gallardo can get through the seventh inning, and then the Brewers are set up right where they want to be. Wooten was throwing a little bit. Gallardo against Russell Martin to start the inning. Martin was hit by a pitch his last time up. Gallardo's hit two batters today. And Russell Martin, little saw fly ball, gonna fall, a base hit. And a lead off base runner for the Buckos in the seventh.
Hey, join the Brewers for Loom Night at Miller Park Thursday, July 24th, and enjoy a special evening with your family making rainbow looms together and watching the Brewers take on the Mets to reserve your shot spot. Call 414 902 4774 or visit Brewers.com slash special events. Here's Pedro Alvarez now in a swing and a foul. Pitch count up over 100 for Gallardo. But he has been at his best in the last three innings. He's faced the minimum since that walk to Walker in the third inning before that hit by Martin. Rob Wooden, the right hander. The left hander is Zach Duke. We got Marte do up next, and then Jordy Mercer. This is the big out in this inning for Gallardo. Pedro Alvarez. You can get Alvarez, you got a struggling hitter next, and then you get to the bottom of the order. Certainly a way through it for Gallardo. Alvarez he is 0 for 2. He bounced into a double play his last time up. And a bouncing ball to third. Ramirez has it. Throw to second and safe there. And Martin wipes out Segura. No chance at a throw to first. That'll be a base hit, I would imagine. That would have been a tough play to get Alvarez at first base. We'll see how they score it. Well, that was a ball you would think that. Ramirez would have to charge. He goes back on it, and Russell Martin, with good speed, able to beat it at second base. Segura, Segura able to avoid contact by getting out of the way. So a good start to the get inning for Pittsburgh. It's going to be a fielder's choice. That would have been a tough out at first. And you got to give a lot of credit to Russell Martin, who is very fast and was hustling, knowing he had a chance to beat that. Instead of an out at second. First and second. Nobody out here. Starling Marte at the plate. Tying run at second. Go ahead run at first for the Pirates. And Marte up there to bunt. And bunts it foul. And Brewers have a shot at third base if Marte bunts it a little bit too hard. Martin with decent speed. But they're going to try and gun down the lead runner if they can. Always puts a little pressure on the third baseman in a spot like this. And remember, Ramirez is just coming back from a hamstring injury. Not quite as mobile as he wants to be right now. See if Marte's up there to bunt. He is, and he gets the ball down foul. And it's 0 and 2. Mm, it's been that kind of season for this guy, huh? Has the bunt, can't get it down. Let's see if Clint Hurdle has him bunting with two strikes. What to do with Starling Marte has been a big question around these parts. Was their leadoff hitter to start the year? Base runners will be heads up for a pitch in the dirt. Gallardo struck him out with a slider in the dirt last time. And he doesn't chase. One ball, two strikes. And the Brewers don't think he's going to be bunting again. They're back. Tough guy to double up. He hit the ball on the ground in the second. Segura committed an error. Gallardo could use a punch out. And the two strike pitch is lined in the right. Pretty well hit. Braun is back and will make the catch. Tagging is Martin. He goes to third. So Marte delivers that run of the third base. But the double play still in order. Not able to get the bunt down. Alvarez is still at first. 
that's a positive at bat for Marte in one regard. But he does keep Gallardo in position to get out of this inning. I think any ball in play that's hit on the barrel is a positive for Marte at this point. <laughs> Didn't that kind of start to his season? Yeah, Brewers would like to get out of town before he figures it out because he is a great talent. Don't be surprised. The Pirates might be thinking about a squeeze here. Had a good guy at the at the plate to do it, and a very smart base runner at third base. Martin at third, tying run. Jordy Mercer at the plate. He's 0 for 2 against Gallardo today, both outs in the air. There goes the runner, Alvarez. The butt is on, and it is foul. Close. Safety squeeze. The only problem is, ordinarily, you don't see a runner take off from first base on that play. If he pops it up, it's a double play, end of inning. Perhaps somebody missed a sign, maybe Alvarez. It's a safety squeeze. Martin not going, but Alvarez is, and fortunate for the Brewers, that ball bunted foul. You know, Weeks was the cover man on that play, the second baseman. Mercer, if he splits Reynolds and Gallardo, that's an easy base hit. And that's a big risk to have a guy take off and have your guy bunt. Now it's 0 1. He squares again. Safety squeeze was on, and the pitch taken for a ball. There's a lot that can happen if Mercer gets the bunt down here. You know, if you know a guy is going to be trying to bunt, you want to try and get a fastball up in his eyes or drop a curveball down low. Maybe he'll pop it up. One ball, one strike. First and third. Here it comes. Another bunt. That one's down. Lucroy will field it and has no throw. Nobody at first base. Nobody covering. You're right. And it'll be. The base is loaded for the Pirates. Well, somebody's got to be at first base. Let's see where Ricky ends up. Let's see, you got Reynolds coming in. It's not his responsibility. Nobody at first base, so Luke Roy holds on to it. That's a mistake by somebody. I, I guess it's Ricky. I'm not sure what the defense was that was on. Well, you've always got to account for first base, if nothing else. Boy, that's a big mistake right there. That would have been an out without a run scoring. And now, instead, base is loaded. Rick Kranitz out to chat with Gallardo. Got the pitcher spot coming up, and Hurdle has already announced Jose Tabata. And perhaps Kranitz issuing a scouting report here. Tabata's been the starter the last two games in left field in this series. I mean that's a big mistake not having a guy at first base. I mean I'm not sure what the play was. I don't really want to lay it on weeks right away. But you know they have different alignments. But somebody's responsible for first base on that. There are some bunt defenses that you might not cover second. But not that. Not ever first base. Well now Gallardo in a jam. And now the. Go ahead run is in scoring position. Tabata, a little half swing, he goes. Coming off the bench, ready to hack. Smart pitch by Gallardo with the breaking ball. Tabata has a couple of RBIs in this series. I mentioned he started the first two games. Tabata was one for three yesterday, drew a walk. Gallardo in need of a ground ball in a big way. Two strikes. Tabat has bounced into nine double plays this season. Yeah, that's a ton. His pinch hitting numbers this year, very good. 260 career, but this season he's seven for 21, has five RBIs as a pinch hitter. Top of the order, Josh Harrison next. Bases loaded, one out. Gallardo deals, and it's in the dirt. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, to this point, Ricky, or I should say, Giovanni 
Gallardo has not left one of those curveballs or sliders up in the zone. Last thing he wants to do here is to get Cobb to something to elevate, hit in the air. It wouldn't take much to get Martin home. This next pitch will be will match Gallardo's most in a start, 114. And Tabata doesn't chase. Been very efficient since the first. Ryan Braun threw out a runner at the plate in that first inning to end the inning. And then Gallardo has been good, had a great stretch there through the fourth, fifth, and the sixth. Two balls, two strikes. He's got the sign he wants. Here he comes, and Tabata bouncing ball, third base foul. Count remains at two and two. And went with the fastball and was able to get in on his hands. Look with that ground ball for a grounded into double play number 10 for Tabata. Couldn't find a better time for it. Two hits in the inning. And a fielder's choice has the bases loaded. Martin at third, Alvarez at second. Mercer over at first. Here it comes, and the 2 2 line foul in the seats. Nice catch up there. Counter made to 2 and 2. Gallardo needing to make a big pitch. Another 2 2 offering. Tabata fouls it back. And hasn't thrown the curveball in this at bat, this sequence. This would be a great time for one. If he's able to get it down in the strike zone, Tabata hasn't seen it yet. It's been fastballs and sliders. Pitch count getting into that danger territory for Giovanni. It's the most he's thrown all year. Probably be his last hitter regardless of what happens. We'll do it again. Another 2 2 and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Gallardo strikes out Tabata. The second out of the inning. That's number eight for Gallardo. Eight strikeouts on pitch number eight to Jose Tabata. Your body able to get ahead quickly. First pitch slider down in the dirt. He couldn't hold up. Then a fastball. On the inside corner, then it was a battle. He tried to get him to chase a couple of sliders, and then Tom was able to foul off a couple of fastballs. One down the line at third base, and then one off to toward first base, and then able to get him on pitch number eight on a high fastball, so threw it right by him down the middle. And you wonder if that fastball change Renicky's mind Renicky has two relievers ready in the bullpen he sent Mark Reynolds during that highlight package he sent Reynolds out to talk to Gallardo and they had a little powwow in the dugout Renicky and Rick Kranitz the pitching coach and Gallardo is going to stay here bases loaded two outs Josh Harrison at the plate and a fly ball right field slicing and it is foul that's about the last guy he went up in this spot right and who would have thought that you know coming into Pittsburgh Josh Harrison the guy you don't want to have to deal with when a base hit can hurt you Harrison's been swinging the bat well took that fastball to the opposite field just slices foul had the distance Harrison is a free swinger at the plate doesn't walk much. Base is full of Pirates, two outs. And that one's in there. A fastball, strike two. Caught him guessing. Yep, 
and check out the location. Not going to be able to do much with it anyway, right on the corner. 120 pitches for Gallardo. Can it get through this seventh inning? Harrison, little jam shot. Reynolds coming in, and he's got it. What a job by Giovanni Gallardo. Strands the bases loaded. It's still 1 0 Milwaukee. Off his worst start of the season, pitching like an ace today. Renicky let it ride with Gallardo on the mound and the bases loaded. And his opening day starter cashed him in. Gallardo with the bases loaded after the bunt single by Jordy Mercer Rock facing the pinch hitter Tabata. Our Marshfield Clinic shining moment gets the strikeout. For the second out, and then gets Harrison on a little weak pop up to first. Yeah, all the breaking pitches that he's been throwing has set up that fastball nicely. Got top of it on a high fastball on the eighth pitch of that bat, and then on the third pitch, he got Harrison on three pitches, ate him up inside, and a knuckle buster to Reynolds at first base. What a job by Giovanni Gallardo today. 121 pitches, the most in a game this year, tied for the fourth most ever in a game for Gallardo. His career high is 126. That was way back in 09. So he's done for the day and a job well done. Seven shutout innings. And now the Pirates go to their bullpen. Tony Watson, the hard thrower, to face Ricky Weeks to start this eighth inning. Two pretty effective eighth inning relievers, both left handers in this series here in Pittsburgh. Watson, who hasn't made has made 18 straight scoreless appearances. The Pirates have Watson, the Brewers have Smith, and you're probably going to see Smith in the eighth. At the play presented by Wendy's, Ricky Weeks walked his last time up. Brewers have three hits today. Jonathan Lucroy has two of them and scored the lone run last inning. Weeks sharply hit to third. Alvarez will make the play for out number one. And here comes Mark Reynolds. Man, what a job by Jeff Locke coming up from the minor leagues today, huh? Basically throwing fastball changeup, very effective, working him in and out. Good pitcher's duel here at the ballpark with the wind blowing out. Felt like a hitter's day, but not the case. Locke went seven innings, gave up three hits and one earned run. And he's probably looking at this and wondering how he's trailing in this game. Two of the three hits were infield hits. The double by Lucroy was a little flare off the end of the bat that hit the line. And a fan reached out and interfered with it. Making it a double. 
And then Lucroy scored on a ground out. A little squibber off the end of Ramirez is bad. It is a fine line in a game like this. Well, Brewers able to execute in the seventh inning, and the Pirates were not. You know, Lucroy with the double. Gomez hit the fly ball to center field to get him to third base. Reynolds takes a strike. Two and two. Reynolds is 0 for 2. He flew out to right and struck out. And Reynolds in the center field routine for McCutcheon. Out number two for Watson. Big play in this game occurred in the seventh to lead off. Check out this hit by Lucroy. Just reached out and punched it to left. It hit the line. Fan reaches out, grabs the ball. Lucroy had stopped running. He thought it was foul. That made it a double. Lucroy scored the run and the fan got ejected. Everybody loses but the Brewers in that inning. <laughs> well, at least he had to move his seat. Unable to stay where he was. Sometimes they don't actually kick him out of the game. They have to they put him in the upper deck so he can't create any more problems. I see. Irving Falou pinch hitting. Yeah, that would be a little harsh, right? Yeah, it would. Falou pushes the bunt foul. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes. Sun shining brightly had some pretty dark clouds rolling in a couple of innings ago. There was a, a chance of rain and still is this afternoon, but we've hit a nice window here for now. And the wind still blowing out towards left field. Look at ahead at the Pirates. In the bottom of the eighth, you have Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, and Gabby Sanchez coming up. Falou, a bouncer to short, and Mercer to end the inning. Three up, three down. Brewers go in order. Bottom of the eighth. Big boys coming up for the Buckos.
will head to New York after this game and they'll start a series with the Mets on Tuesday. Well it's not Will Smith out of the bullpen typically the setup reliever for the Brewers it's going to be Rob Wooten. And so Wooten's stock continues to rise. And he pitched yesterday against the Pirates tossed a scoreless seventh inning gave up a hit also struck out a batter. He's been very good since his recall. Was called back up on May 1st. And since that time he's been pretty good. And so Wooden in a big spot with the Brewers leading one nothing. I'd be curious to hear from Renicky after the game about Will Smith. We have not seen him throwing in the bullpen. He pitched yesterday. He's been pitched a lot lately. At the heart of the order here, Wooten facing the switch hitter Walker. A couple of right handers after that as Walker rolls foul. The Pirates have Jason Grilly in their bullpen. And Grilly hasn't been on the mound in a while since the third, so we probably see him in the ninth. Yeah, regardless, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know Smith threw in yesterday's ball game looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. He had Friday off he was not going to pitch under any circumstances. Walker in the right center Braun's got a long way to go and Braun will run it down. And Walker is retired. A breaking pitch down around his ankles and he just golfed it out there that ball had some juice on it as it got out to the gap. Walker with those quick hands from left side of the plate, but Ryan Braun playing deep, able to make the catch easily. And a big out for Rob Wooten. That was probably the, the key batter as Renicky's thinking about it, the switch hitter. You'd much rather have Walker bat right handed if you can. But now he has the matchups facing Andrew McCutcheon, who lets it rip. Flat has been a very good pitch for Wooten. Got away with a hanger that time. McCutcheon singled in the first inning, hit one sharply that went off the top of Weeks's glove and out into center field. He's one out of three. Gallardo struck him out in the sixth inning. In the air to right field. Braun is over. That ball's deep. Braun in front of the wall, and it's in the bullpen. Or actually in the service area out there. Just ran out of room, and there is hardly any of that in right field. That ball just died as it got out there in the corner. The wind kind of pushing against it a little bit. Blowing out the left. McCutcheon slices it, and it looked like Braun was going to get there, but ran out of room. That is a dangerous wall in right field. As well, it's only about three feet tall. The one two on the way, McCutcheon fouls it back, got in on his hands, did Wooten. Good to see today on both sides pitchers being effective inside. You don't see much of that these days. They've been locating pretty well and they're dangerous to pitch in there with a one run lead but Wooten got it up and in. Another one two and a breaking ball hammered center field long run Gomez can't get there to the wall it goes. McCutcheon will settle for a double. And there's the tying run in scoring position. It looked like Gomez was going to be able to get there but that's kind of. Pulled the hand back. This ball had some hook to it. It was a hanging breaking pitch. McCutcheon all over it. But and watch Gomez as he gets out there into the gap out in center field. You realize he can't get to it. You don't want to die because you don't want to allow McCutcheon to get into third base. So he plays it safe, holds him to a double. Uh, McCutcheon in scoring position. And it'll be Gabby Sanchez. 0 for 3 today.
Renicky has two relievers in the bullpen. Frankie Rodriguez and Zach Duke. So we have to assume at this point that Will Smith is not available. There'd be no other reason for him uh, not to use him in this spot. You don't very rarely see K Rod up in the eighth inning either. One ball, one strike. The Brewers do have a day off tomorrow. Could see K Rod with two outs. Probably not with one out. Wooten delivers. Sanchez back up the middle. Weeks is there. The shift was on and it pays off in a big way. That saves a run. Out number two. McCutcheon ends up at third base. Perfectly positioned. I mean, he didn't have to move. All he had to do was make sure he stayed in front of it. I mean, talk about good positioning. How about Garth Orge in that scouting report? Right there, and they got a big out. Heck of a play by Weeks as well. Planted his body right in front of it. And so now with two outs, Renicky is going to make that call. Scheduled hitter is Russell Martin as Renicky goes to his bullpen. We'll take a break. Tying run at third for the Pirates. There goes with Rob Wooten to start this eighth. Wooten gives up a double to McCutcheon, but gets two outs, and now he's going to go to his closer, Francisco Rodriguez, who will be called on to try to get the final four outs. The Columbia St. Mary's save tracker is at 18 for K. Rod, and he picked up number 18 on Thursday against the Twins. Pitched an inning, struck out a batter. You don't see K. Rod pitching more than one inning very often, coming in with. A man at third base and two outs. 18 out of 20 and a 217 earned run average for K Rod. More strikeouts and innings pitched. Frankie is second in the league in saves. Sergio Romo leads the league with 19, the Giants closer. K Rod and Houston Street tied with 18. Tough customer at the plate. Russell Martin with the tying run at third base. Martin had a hit his last time up, muscled one into left center. One nothing Brewers, two outs in the Pirates' eighth inning. And that's the real story with Russell Martin. His batting average is in the 260s, but he's at his best with runners in scoring position. Because he doesn't strike out much. He puts the ball in play. He's not afraid to go to the opposite field. Understands the situation. Need a base hit. Doesn't try and hit a home run. Well, it would be 
so risky. But I just wonder if K Rod feels like he's got a better matchup with Alvarez on deck, the big home run hitter, but a lefty as opposed to Russell Martin. Yeah, especially since you're down in the count 2 0. Oh. It would mean putting on the potential winning run. We'll see what he does here. 2 0 oh to Russell Martin. McCutcheon at third. And Martin takes a strike. He threw him a breaking ball. That's not something you do very often. I mean, you never really put the go ahead run on base. You don't want to walk him intentionally. You saw Buck Showalter do that at Miller Park when the Orioles were in town. Mm -hmm. It worked then. That doesn't always work. First time all year, Renneke's asked K Rod to give him more than three outs. The 2 1 Martin swings and misses. He was trying to hit one out of here. K Rod dropped a change up on him. And a dandy. Yep, his bread and butter. We saw Jeff Locke with the change up all day, and that one down the middle, and Martin way out in front. Last year, Frankie on two occasions got more than three outs for a save. First attempt this year. Two and two to Martin. Here it comes. In tight. Almost hit him. Full count. The Pirates are one for eight with runners in scoring position. The only hit was that bunt single by Jordy Mercer last inning. They've had their chances. Tying run at third. Payoff pitch on the way. Martin swings, pops it up. Reynolds will give it a look. Wind's blowing that way. And it'll be in the seats. Counter remains at three and two. He's, uh, trying to drop the changeup. He's throwing back to back fastballs. One almost hit Martin. He got that one by him. He got in on his hand. Let's see what he does here. Not afraid to throw the change up on a full count. McCutcheon had a one out double. Ended up at third. On the ground ball out by Sanchez who hit it sharply. But right at weeks. Another payoff on the way from Frankie Rodriguez. And Martin takes a cold strike three and out he goes. Struck out and thrown out. And Hurdle may go with him. As Frankie Rodriguez strikes him out to end the inning and the Brewers still lead one nothing. As we go to the ninth. And Hurdle is livid as well with Ed Hickox. And out goes Hurdle. You knew that was coming. That pitch did look like it was down and in. That didn't look like a strike.
here is Chris Stewart after Russell Martin was ejected and Rock let's see the pitch with Fox tracks. Yeah, that had not been a strike all day. It's been a relatively tight zone. Fox tracks has it pretty close but. Hey to me that doesn't look like a strike. I think the Brewers got the benefit of a call on a very important point in the ball game and not only does Russell Martin get thrown out but the Pirates skipper Clinton Hurdle given the heave ho on that call. Jeff Bannister will take over the managerial duties as Hurdle gets run as well as the Brewers catch a break. It would have been first and third two outs and Alvarez coming up instead. We move to the ninth and the Pirates closer will take over Jason Grilly with the Brewers up one nothing. He's blown three saves two of them coming against the Brewers the last time the Brewers were in Pittsburgh on back to back days. A 321 earned run average both the home runs that he's allowed. Giving up the Ryan Braun. So we'll see how the Pirates are able to navigate through the ninth. And Braun do up second this ninth inning Segura will lead off. And then Braun followed by Lucroy. Russell Martin strikes out with a runner at third. Well, they called strike three. And strike one to Segura. Russell Martin's been irritated with the strike zone all day of Ed Hitchcock's meaning because it's been too too tight. Not giving enough strikes and spans the strike zone and brings him up in a big point in the ball game. Wow. Segura, little ground ball to second. Walker will make the play for the out. And Segura 0 for 4. Well, the Brewers will enjoy a day off tomorrow. Well deserved day off. Our Miller Light, what's on tap? We resume Tuesday. Matsuzaka and Estrada on the mound. Dice K now pitching for the Mets. Marco Estrada looking for his sixth win. Willie Peralta will get the ball Wednesday, and then Loesch will finish up the road trip on Thursday. Those are all 5:30 air times in Milwaukee for Brewers Live. Garza won yesterday, and we'll see Loesch again on a getaway day next week as Braun sends one to left. And Marte makes a play, two outs. Two up, two down for Grilly. Braun is 0 for 4. And that'll bring up Jonathan Lucroy. That's a hard 0 for 4 for Ryan Braun. His second and third time's up. He hit the ball right on the nose. Line drives right at infielders. Big hang with him for Braun. You think about how the Brewers scored their run and then how the Pirates were held scoreless last inning. That's the way the game goes. The game is not fair. No, nobody said it was. <laughs> Here's Luke Croy who has two of the three Brewers hits today. And an infield hit and a flare double. He scored the lone run. Without some. Impressive defensive shifting. This game could very easily be tied on that rocket by Sanchez, who hit it right through the box. Matter of fact, Wooden tried to make a play on the ball, and Ricky Weeks was playing up the middle, fielded it on a hop to get the second out of the eighth inning. One and two. Some mock cheers go out for Ed Hickox after calling that breaking ball a strike. Okay, Rod will be coming back out for the bottom of the ninth. As Luke Roy goes down the right field line, and that's fair, and that'll bounce off the top of the sidewall. That's a ground rule double. Dead ball out there, and Lucroy with his third hit of the day, his second double. Guy just continues to impress. That's what we're talking about. You know, we talk about that on Brewers Live today, how he goes line to line. I mean, literally line to line today. He hit the left field line his last time up for a double and almost hitting the right field line this time for a double. Tough to pitch to, tough to defend. Now well, Lucroy started the day third in the league in hitting. 
Gaining some ground on Yasiel Puig, who's ahead of him. Gomez is seventh in the league in batting to start play today. He's one out of three. And he pops it up. Shallow left back is Mercer. And it'll be Marte to make the catch. So that'll do it for the Brewers in the ninth. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. K Rod, does he have four outs in him this afternoon? Brewers clinging to a one nothing lead. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning and Frankie Rodriguez back on the mound for the ninth. He came in, got the final out of the eighth. By the way, his two outings last year where he got more than three outs were not save opportunities. His last four out save came against Milwaukee when he was pitching for the Mets in June of 2011. That was about a month before the Brewers acquired him via trade. Inning in a third against Milwaukee at Miller Park. And a couple of strikeouts. So he's done it before, Rock, but he hasn't done it much lately. And this will be the first time in a Brewers uniform if he gets to the end. Well, he should be feeling pretty good. I mean, he hadn't pitched since Thursday. He got tomorrow off. So everybody gets to be able to take it easy tomorrow and then get right back at it Tuesday. So why not right now? Good spot for it. He'll have the bottom of the order coming up. Unfortunately, it begins with Pedro Alvarez. The National League home run champ last year. Alvarez, Marte, maybe, and then Jordy Mercer. Could pinch hit for Marte. We'll see. Remember, Russell Martin is out of the game, ejected, and Clint Hurdle tossed out as well. One for six lifetime against K Rod. Well, had Russell Martin gotten the call last inning, K Rod would have faced Alvarez with runners at the corners in two outs. Instead, he gets him in a leadoff position here. Bouncing ball, shift on again. And Segura throws out Alvarez. Boy, chalk one up to the Brewers scouting department for this one. <laughs> Well, Garth Orge has got to have a uh, big smile on his face today. He's the guy that sets the defense. You know, the video coordinator, Joe Crawford. They've got the uh, the paper scouting reports, and these guys spend a lot of hours trying to set the defense. And these guys have been in position all day long. One gone in the ninth, and it'll be Starling Marte. There's Orge in the middle, positioning his infielders. Marte drops a butt down foul. They got uh, Garth Orr's position in the infielders, Ed Cedar position in the outfielders. And it's a team effort, coaches and players. The players have to execute. And it, it's all generated out of the Brewers' advanced scouting department. 
Carl Mueller and his gang and putting together all the data so the coaches can make those decisions. A lot of it has to do too with you know how much you play the shift with, based on who's out there on the mound. Well, it's more of a touch and touch and feel thing than you think. So much going on between every pitch, especially with those guys. Big swing and a miss. Oh, and to the count on Marte. This is a guy that scares you guys with struggling and can't take him lightly. He can take you out of the ballpark. Change up right down the middle. Got to see if he'll chase one here, huh? I bounce a couple of curveballs. No balls, two strikes. One man gone in the ninth. And in the dirt, Marte able to lay off. Pirates have Ike Davis in the on deck circle. What hit for the shortstop Mercer. So you got a couple of guys who are in long offers. Do up here and Marte doesn't chase. Two balls, two strikes. Starling Marte at the plate. Long look by K Rod. And it's down again. He doesn't chase. So now it's three and two. And now you're forced to come in there. Well, last time he was in this spot, he went with a curveball and he was able to get Russell Martin on that cold strike three. Let's see what he does here. Payoff pitch. Lost him. Last guy you want to walk to. Oh, for his last 23. Oh. Starling Marte, and he's walked. Adam Owen, too. Lost him. And now you have a base stealer aboard the Pirates' best stolen base threat. Marte at first base with 13 stolen bases this year. K Rod's a guy you can run on, too. Here's Ike Davis. Pinch hitting. Well, you know that Marte is going to try and steal a base in the next couple of pitches. Get into scoring position. Eliminate the double play. He's been good. It's only been caught four times. And a couple of former teammates matching up here. Davis and K-Rod. Former Mets. K Rod got a strikeout in the eighth. Struck out Martin to end the inning. And in the threat, maybe got the benefit of a call. Now one gone. Brewers look for a ground ball. Davis takes a strike. Couple of hits career against Frankie Rodriguez, but Davis is over his last 20 at the plate. See if Marte's on the run. Long pause. He stays put, and Davis takes a ball. Yeah, not a very big lead over there. It's probably a one-way lead, thinking that K Rod. You know, really not going to pay much attention to him with that short lead. He doesn't have far back, that far to go to get back safely. So he's thinking one way, a one way lead. Oh, 
anxiously quiet here at PNC and a big crowd. There goes Marte. Lucroy's throwing a second base on the bag. Out at second. Lucroy guns him down. Marte thinks he's safe. And we might have a challenge here. Jeff Bannister now managing after Hurdle was ejected is on his way out. Boy, how good a throw is it? Look how quick his feet are. That throw right on the money, and it had to be. He looks safe. Yeah, he looks safe. This I bet one. they're going to reverse it. Yeah, this one could be reversed. Looks like Segura missed the hand of Marte. Got yeah. him on the forearm. Yeah. yeah, he's in there. Yep. So the umpires will go to the challenge here. The calling umpire John Tumpain and the crew chief Mike Everett. The ball beat him but you can see Marte able to get in there and. Segura a little bit late with the tag. The Pirates fans reacting to the replay. On the video board. I'm not sure this is going to take very long. But you never know. The safe champ comes raining down. Well, it's been one of those games where the Brewers have gotten most of the breaks today. As the umpires wait on the communication from New York. And here comes the call. Safe stolen base and a big one. So it is overturned. And the tying run is in scoring position for the Pirates. Now that was about as good a throw as Luke could have made, but it was clear on the replay that Marte got the hand in there. Now K Rod's in trouble. A 2 1 count with nobody out, or I should say one out. Bench hitter Ike Davis. Representing the winning run, the tying run at second, the Speedy Marte. Three and one. Pirates will go to another pinch hitter next. Their best pinch hitter, Travis Snyder, he's on deck. Hitters count three balls and a strike on Ike Davis. Walked him. Back to back walks. Well, Pirates haven't even had to put the ball in play and they've got two base runners on. Now the winning run at first base. K Rod having a difficult time in his second inning of work throwing strikes. Gonna have a pinch runner at first base as Snyder is announced as the pinch hitter. Clint Barmas will pinch run. And he carries the winning run. Here's Snyder now. And Pirates now out of players on the bench. Well, Marte, 0 for his last 23, draws the walk. Ike Davis, 0 for his last 20, draws a walk. And now K Rod in the deep waters here. Travis Snyder. He's been the Pirates best off the bench so far this season. Has hit a pinch hit home run this year. Snyder hitting. Over 300 off the bench this season. Strike. Just hit the edge. Ofer against K Rod in his career, though. 0 for 5. Brewers looking for a ground ball to turn two. That would end the game and get them out of here with a series win. 
Snyder, a shot. Oh, Segura to second for one. The throw to first, not in time. Wow. Gene Segura saves a run. Goodness gracious. An unbelievable play by Segura. And again, the shifting pays off. Yeah, I'll tell you, Gene Segura, how many times have you seen him do that? Not only does he knock it down, he keeps it in the glove. That ball ticketed for center field. But look, Ricky able to make the out at second. And a pretty close play at first base. My goodness, you're not going to see any better play than that today. That is a heck of an effort by Gene Segura. It's a game saver for now. Two outs in the inning. First and third for the Pirates. Tell you what, the Brewers are pulling up aces at every <laughs> turn in this game so far. Yeah, and I tell you, Ricky Weeks, a blind throw to first base. That could have easily been airmailed into the stands. A risky throw by Ricky. Two gone. Here's Harrison, Pittsburgh's leadoff hitter. Lucroy smothers it. The Pirates have hit a number of rockets at infielders in the last few innings that could have totally changed the game. Well, you got to be aware of Snyder taking off trying to steal a run here. What do the Brewers do? Do they throw through? That's the winning run at first base. Harrison a swing and a miss. Well, three of the last six batters have hit bullets. Sanchez with a runner at third. Hit a shot to second. Alvarez to start this inning. Hit a shot to short. And that great play just a moment ago off the bat of Snyder. The 1 1 is upstairs. Two balls in a strike. A change up very effective against young hitters like Harrison. These guys are dialed in on the fastball. He's been all over the fastball in this series. He'd like to be able to throw that change up for strikes. How about those gaudy numbers? Two outs, runners in scoring position. That's the situation here. K Rod deals. Harrison, little jam shot coming in. Gomez. Gomez makes the catch. And the ball game is over. And the Brewers pull the Houdini act today. A 1 0 victory. Their 10th win of the year against the Pirates. They're now 10 and 3, and the first 1 0 win of the season for the Brewers, and it took the gold glove defense of Carlos Gomez to end it. Yeah, made it look easy, and how about that play by Gene Segura? It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, this is the way this team has been playing good pitching, solid defense, and they win one to nothing here in Pittsburgh to take the series. Unbelievable win today for the crew. Pirates. Unlucky today. The Brewers will take it. They win the series heading to New York after two out of three in the bird. Time for Brewers Live. Let's check in with Jeff Grayson at our Fox Sports Wisconsin studios. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, thanks, Frankie. Your 19th save comes with a four out save. What was the key to getting through that? Just stay focused. Uh, I think I lost my rhythm a little bit with the second batter. I, 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 I made really bad pitches. I wasn't, uh, I was pretty much, you know, trying to be too perfect. And, and you see what you know what happened. I ended up walking and and put the time run and, and obviously go ahead after that. But I had to battle back, find a way to to get back on my strike zone and make all the pitches. 
How much did those defensive shifts really help you out? Some guys hit some balls sharply, but guys were in position to make the plays. Yeah, definitely. It's huge. Uh, that's why this guy, you know, we got really good scouting report all that. And uh, I, I mean, as a, you know, as a, as a pitcher, I pay attention to that, see where they're playing, and I pitch according to the situation. Good game today. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, that's Francisco Rodriguez with his 19th save of the season, and it was a.